this is just a little bit of an add-on to some of the stuff about fundamentalism. The the building metaphor, which in some ways define what what fundamentalists mean, brings with it all kinds of entailments. Yeah, I've talked about the fact that height is an entailment, and the view from the top of a building is better than the view from the bottom. So there's an entailment there to do with vision and world view. There's effort as an entailment, light, all those kind of things. But one of the entailments is to do with load bearing. The foundations of a building are load bearing, which means that you can't take the foundations away without the building collapsing. Yes? You, so not only do they serve as a platform on which to build, they, it's, it's also absolutely necessary that, that platform remain in place for the life of the building. But that isn't the case with knowledge. Um, or not always the case with knowledge. Quite often you, you, there are some preliminary findings which give you good results, at least good enough results, in order to be able to use those results as a basis on which to build further experimental methods, further knowledge gathering processes to, to acquire another layer of knowledge and that is serviceable enough to build on top of that. If at some point in the future you discover that the first thing you tinkered around with, the first piece of, of knowledge that you arrived at, was actually flawed, it doesn't necessarily mean that everything else is flawed. It doesn't have to bear the load of every finding beyond that point, does it? It just has to provide a platform on which to build the next level. Knowledge can act as a, a kind of scaffolding for further knowledge. Scaffolding which you can take away, you know, it's like a ladder, you know, you take the ladder up to the thing and then you knock it up, you can knock the ladder away once you're up there. A lot, of, a lot of it works in that kind of way, and it works in that way in science and other kinds of knowledge gathering processes. It doesn't seem to work so well in religion, at least not a lot of religions. Some mystical traditions have that. I know there are some, I don't know as, as much as I'd like to about this, but I know there are some mystical traditions which... Um, you know, convey a certain kind of information, allow you to believe a certain story, and then at a certain point you said, actually all that stuff, that story, that's just a story to get you to this point in your development of, of, of a, you know, in the getting of whatever kind of wisdom you've got. It's just the ladder that gets you up there. Once, you, once you're up there, you can kick the ladder away because you've achieved it, you know what I mean? And when we have those kinds of things in, in education, I'm trying to think of an example, but there are certainly kind of gateway concepts in education that um, it's fairly straightforward, nothing woo-woo or mystical or anything like that. There are you know, ways of understanding the world which aren't correct, aren't accurate, but they're good enough that they at least take you as a, as a, as a, as a student to the stage where you can understand a bit more. And then once you've got there, you, as I say, you can kick the ladder away. You understand that the stuff that got you there isn't exactly factual, even though it kind of felt like it for a while. But it's got you to a point where, where facts can, can start to kick in, or different kinds of truths or wisdoms or practices can be mobilised. So I think, that's, I think in terms of the fundamentals, that's quite important. Fundamentals don't need to be load-bearing, don't need to be permanently load-bearing. They just have to provide a solid enough platform for you to build on top of religious, uh, some religious fundamentalists don't accept that. I'm suspe I suspect most religious fundamentalists would not recognise, for example, scripture as being something that can be dispensed with once you've built a wisdom on top of it, uh, or the literal truth of scripture, um, because they see it as a kind of load-bearing structure in the building of their edifice of knowledge that leads them to the, to the world view that they will gain from the top of it. I think they feel that if that initial building block was removed, the whole thing would collapse, rather than just seeing it as a piece of scaffolding that helped to build the structure that leads them to some kind of wisdom. Anyway, thanks very much. Bye. I think, moreover, on this, in terms of this idea that a knowledge edifice, if you're using that kind of metaphor, uh, built upon a foundation which, and you're really used to the idea that a foundation should be load-bearing, you know, if you've got that part of the entailment, even, you know, and you probably wouldn't recognise that this is even a, a viable way of criticising that, because you're so 
single-mindedly attached to the building metaphor of knowledge. If that's what you've got, then you, in discussion with other people about ideas, you would hark back to that idea. And you see this a lot in um, debates between religious fundamentalists, Christian fundamentalists, particularly creationists, and uh, people who are, accept evolution. You know, the number of times I've seen creationists attempt to undermine, and that's a significant word, to mine underneath the edifice of evolution by pointing out some potential flaw or some small weakness in evolutionary theory. You know, the, the, clearly, the, the strategy that they're working with, based upon the metaphor that they're locked into, is that because their understanding of their knowledge is, is built like a like a tower, like a Jenga block of like Jenga blocks, you know what I mean? With the Bible being the bottom block, you absolutely can't move. Because that's their model, they believe that um, evolutionary theory, for example, scientific knowledge, must work in the same way. And it doesn't necessarily work in the same way. And indeed there are other metaphors for knowledge production in addition to, to building things up like Jenga blocks. So you will see creationists, as I say, attempting to undermine um, evolutionary theory by pointing to some difficulty or some unknown quantity or, 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 or some, yeah, some um, perceived flaw. And no matter how much you say that's not important, you know, they're they find that difficult to understand. Because of course evolutionary to the extent that evolutionary theory has developed as a block of as a set of knowledge, to the extent that it has used building metaphors, then the foundations have changed several times. You know, in in, in several places in Origin of Species, Charles Charles Darwin himself is clearly working with um, a genetic model that has the inheritance of acquired characteristics, the Markian kind of model which we know isn't the kit isn't true um, so he so his original theory was was wrong in places but the fact that his original theory was wrong was revised shortly afterwards and including by himself uh, that didn't knock the whole edifice down it's it, you, you, you can still take out the foundational blocks and put in other ones or you can review those because the idea that knowledge is a load-bearing structure that metaphor isn't necessary um, and in fact, in the case of evolution, the the building metaphor itself is a very limited one, isn't it? People tend to use more of a kind of um, it's a kind of mapping one or a, uh, a triangulation. One. People talk about converging lines of evidence. That's the that's one of the the the, uh, the phrases that you'll hear a lot talked about in terms of how we come to know that evolution is a really robust theory. It's not robust because it's built on a single robust foundation. It's robust because there are converging lines of evidence, almost as if people have been exploring. You know, there's this anthropologist, cultural anthropologist, who's been exploring and find to try to find where that leads. Here's this um, molecular biologist. Here's this geneticist. Here's this archaeologist, and all these people are pursuing their lines of research, and these lines of research all seem to lead to the same place. So it's a much more of a kind of location or a mapping model of um, of how knowledge is arrived at and substantiated. Um, and so these, these lines of evidence converge. And of course, if one piece of evidence turns out to be wrong, it in a sense, that doesn't matter because it's, it's, it's just a misstep on a series of journeys. Um, but as I say, if you're a, a fundamentalist creationist, you won't get that because you don't understand the mapping model of knowledge creation converging lines of evidence will mean nothing to you, you'll be trying to find that fundamental building block, that little piece of Jenga wood at the bottom of evolutionary theory that you can knock away and you'll believe that that's how, it's, how evolutionary theory is undermined or refuted or called into question. And it isn't, but, but that seems to be the major strategy. So yeah, so I'm just, yeah, that's just more stuff on fundamentalism really. Thanks very much. Bye.